today are just chock full of references to the Holy Spirit. Isn't that awesome? Jesus is promising his disciples that after he is taken away, remember this coming Thursday is Ascension Day, and that's when Jesus left to be with him. That after he left, the Father, God the Father, would send the Holy Spirit to be with the disciples. He uses the term advocate to refer to the Holy Spirit. And in Greek, a different word is used. Usually the word for Holy Spirit is pneuma, which is not that makes sense. But in this case, the Greek word is different, apparently, and literally speaking. Something like a lawyer or something like a helper. So Jesus is adding a little bit more to this Holy Spirit that we see than portrayed in the other Gospels, but a bit of a stronger role. And Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, this advocate, will teach the disciples and remind them of what. Himself had told him. Jesus said the advocate is keeping the disciples connected, if you will, to Jesus. The Holy Spirit maintains that connection between human beings and Jesus Christ. In the book of Revelation, the reading for today. Marvelous, fantastical vision guided by the Holy Spirit. The writer John of Patmos is taken up on a high mountain where he could see many things that human sight would not be able to see. And in the first reading, when he asks the apostles, we hear something that's very similar to what we heard last week. The expansion of the Christian movement the expansion of what was originally a group of Jewish Christians to encompass Gentiles as well. This time the key player is Paul, as I think was Peter. Paul is in Asia Minor, Troy, Troas. And suddenly he sees a man from Macedonia who says, Come and help us. And the way the passage reads, Paul immediately, with his companions, got on board a ship and took a zigzagging course over to what is now Greece, Macedonia, and went to the town of Philippi. Philippi was a major city in Macedonia, and it was a Roman colony, and it was a popular place for a former military, Roman military, to, to retire. And there they could enjoy the full benefits of Roman citizenship uh, in, a con in a community that was similar to their own situation. There weren't many Jews there, there were some, but most worshipped the emperor and followed what seemed to be a religion with the emperor and his They wandered around the city, all of his companions, for a couple of days, and then when the Sabbath came, they wanted to find a place where they could worship with other Jews. Paul, of course, was a Jew who had become a Christian, and no other sort of conversion of the world in a For reasons that aren't explained to us in the reading, but I guess it was because of the Holy Spirit. Their search led them out of the city, out of the city of Philippi, out of the gates to a body of water. And there indeed they found a group of Jews who were worshiping God on the Sabbath, along with some other people who were not technically speaking or realistically speaking Jews, but worshiped God of the Jews, like Cornelius, who we heard about last week. And they asked, about Jesus, and Paul started preaching about Jesus, and these people who heard the preaching believed in Jesus and asked to be baptized. And they were, including those who were not Jews. 
So you see, it's the same progression, expansion.
tell the credit. We can do that. We can say, hey, look how smart I am that I did this or did that. But my father could say, hey, look at me, how wonderful I am. I guess that this was just the right time for the gospel. But instead, my father attributed it to the same source. And that's what we need. When something happens that guides us, some urging, some prompting from the Holy Spirit. It's good for us if we give credit to the Holy Spirit. Now, I've been with you as a supply priest off and on for about a year. And I've been fascinated by the history of this congregation. This is an unusual congregation. It's history is unusual. I've interviewed some of the members of this congregation that are long-term members. They've been around a little bit. And I've studied what's available in written histories of the congregation. And I'm convinced that the Holy Spirit has been at work in this congregation since 1873. The Holy Spirit guided this congregation, acquired this property, and built this building, and so forth. The inspiration of the Holy Spirit is the foundation, not just of the building, but of the congregation. And throughout its history, there have been moments and there's been a new direction taken that has strengthened the congregation, caused it to grow, and left its mark in this neighborhood and in the larger city of Washington. There's also been times when people interpreted the Holy Spirit in different ways. And there were disagreements that led to conflict. When people left or other state. There have been some mistakes made along the way. And it's been my experience that when I make a mistake, that it's the Holy Spirit that helps me get it out of that mistake. And to have a new beginning and a fresh start. Well, I think this is that moment for St. Luke's Church. This is a beautiful period. There is now, thank God, an interim record, full time, working with you. It's time to pray that the Holy Spirit will come amongst us this congregation and move it forward in new directions. But I have a challenge. Are you willing to admit that the Holy Spirit is your partner in this congregation? Is your partner in leading and guiding this congregation? I mean, if you want to do it all yourself, then you don't need a partner. But, I think the results will be much more productive and much more in line with God's purposes for this congregation if you take on the Holy Spirit as your partner. And you pray for that part of yourself. And when that help comes, you accept it and receive it with thanks. And you tell one another, this is the Holy Spirit moving in our midst. Somehow we are embarrassed to admit to that. But I think it's the first step in acknowledging that the congregation needs God's guidance, needs God's leadership. 
so that the elected leaders of this congregation are not just doing what they think best, but they're praying, praying for the Holy Spirit to give them guidance, the direction that God wants this congregation. So our question for you, do you believe the Holy Spirit is at work in this congregation? Are you willing to talk about it that way? See, I think you have come, you're coming out of what is probably the most difficult chapter in the history of this congregation. The last 25 years or so have been very difficult. The only way you're going to put that in perspective so you can move on in a new direction is to talk about it. It's to talk about it with each other, guided by the Holy Spirit. Talk about it with your priest. Talk about it with your friends. Instead of gossiping in the parking lot, talk about what the Holy Spirit may be doing in this congregation. And then sort it out. That's my challenge.